and I am currently the president of uh, the uh, Conference of NGOs in Consultative Relationship with the United Nations. It's a long, big word, and therefore it's better known as Congo. But you have to say that today, that it is not the country Congo, but it is the Conference of NGOs. It exists already since 48, and the purpose was uh, at the time to see and safeguard the rights of civil society of NGOs to be heard at the United Nations debate. And that is still our mandate, but we have been, since we have been really uh, doing a lot of outreach, we take also the UN agenda into the regions, and we see in which way to really embrace and get people and uh, I would say be as inclusive as possible. Although in general our membership, I mean it's an umbrella association of, of uh, many organizations, say more than 500, which are often very big net networks in themselves. So it's a huge uh, and very, very diverse membership, which is a challenge and which is also an opportunity. So I think uh, what we want to do in which way civil society is really more and more not only impacting, but really, uh, say, coming from, uh, from impact to, to partnership and to see in which way civil society's voice today ever more needs to be heard but we have come here therefore into the Internet Governance Forum with the hope that uh, finally we will be at, uh, I would say, equal level to bring at least the intellectual input. We all have different roles. I mean, I think we should not forget that when we are together, we are still have different roles. Governments have their own roles and we want to have strong governments too. And the private sector has a different role than the nonprofit. So we want also to see that. But at the end of the day, in order to see, to make really an inroad, to implement what so many, many governments have in lofty goals <laughs> established at the United Nations also, we, I think it is definitely a possibility to see in which way we can all help together to work to implement finally these lofty goals. So the Internet for me and for us is therefore a provider, it's an opportunity, it's a tool to see in which way really our citizens say, sit, I would say ordinary citizens now can be empowered to better participate in the public debate, be it at the local or be it at the national and also at the international level. So that is definitely our goal and we see that there is a possibility. Yet there is still also a very, very open way. I mean, capacity building and uh, all those who have traditionally been excluded in many, many debates. And we have tried as we as Conference of NGOs who have so many also organizations which have been uh, traditionally tend to have been excluded, be it uh, indigenous or uh, say youth women, uh, disability, all these uh, particular organizations that we hope and see that they, they come into the debate much more openly and can also not just be participants but also bring their own knowledge. Uh, if we think about knowledge of the indigenous peoples that has been most, most of the time been excluded and is yet not part of the knowledge which we want to create, I mean, as a knowledge society, which we want to see. I mean, the information society of tomorrow is the knowledge society, but that, of course, should include knowledge of every parts of the world, and not just the knowledge of those who have traditionally been and uh, have produced uh, either, say, governance structures and have decided what is knowledge. So I think there is a grand possibility and yet, uh, we find even here today, I mean, that um, many things are lacking. Disability people have no, uh, they are not even shown. We don't see, as, as it was heard earlier this afternoon, this morning, that we don't see people in rolling chairs, we don't see the blind people, we don't see canes, we don't see all that. So in the preparation, and I think that is where also civil society has a particular role to point to those who need to be at the table when any kind of decisions are being made. So once again, for us, it is a huge opportunity. Uh, I would say, and I would like to see, as we are, as Conference of NGOs Congo, not only involved in this whole 
uh, internet governance or say even the ICTs in general, but we want to see that it is mainstreamed through all the other areas. When we're talking about human rights, when we're talking about environment, when we're talking about um, women issues, when we're talking about development, I mean, f development issue is the issue number one, which was also said here, it should be uh, have a development oriented discussion. So we want to see this really mainstream throughout and to see in which way it can accelerate definitely the development agenda and in which way it will help to see some of those lofty goals including the Millennium Development Goals and others can really accelerate to help to implement. So this is our goal and this is definitely where we have been also involved and ours is always to help facilitate civil society. We have been facilitating in a way uh, civil society throughout this visit process from day one until the end and uh, it was a new experience because uh, civil society in this visit and follow-up process is a different kind yet and the challenge is still also to get the more traditional civil society on board which still think oh this is some kind of technology discussion is not important for our uh, say human rights development or environmental uh, issues so all the big uh, and really large development organizations they are not on board so I mean we have to still see that we do this mainstreaming, that we do see that ICTs and, of course, the whole discussion now also on internet governance will be really mainstreamed. So this is, it's a lot of challenge still for us. Well, that is definitely what we want to see. And I said, I mean, this is still missing as our main uh, membership. Uh, I would say really uh, slots and big, big uh, membership, they are still not very much interested. So to see in which way we can really see how terribly important for them in their own work it is to take ICTs for development, to take ICTs, uh, internet governance, very, very uh, earnestly and honestly into their work and also see how, for instance, if we're talking about in, uh, internet governance, how this is a development issue, because what is finally being determined, be it content or be it access or be it diversity, these are all issues of development. I mean, finally, to get on an equal playing field through the uh, capacity building, through the empowerment of exactly the possibilities which the internet really uh, offers us. But, I mean, in offering this to us, uh, we see at this time that the technology is fast running away by itself and we are almost still on a reactive, <laughs> sort of reacting to it. Not yet proactive enough to see in which way we, what possibilities we can do. And I think this has been uh, my uh, impression also from these two days that we have to think even new how really proactive we can we have to be and have to become in order that we want to see this happen what we say that it is the huge harmonizer in order to help people to really uh, be uh, definitely on the board on the table when decisions are being made and I mean this is you see governments have to have their final word in certain things which we do not want to take away from them but in order that they find this way they need to hear all of us and on some of the ways of internet directly on the techniques and on the uh, I mean on the technology itself it is not governments who have their the expertise I mean that we there we definitely need of course the academia and technology experts who have to come and and at least you know they are at least here at the moment and also those who are there from big business and to uh, to see in which way we uh, they all have to take the responsibility that what we see at the end of the day is that it is really this enabler I mean we need to see that and not just as a market tool, I mean, to get ever more business. I mean, it, it is, we have to bring these things together. Well, my biggest hope is really that it is, uh, as I said, uh, we are coming from a human rights background, that an internet is the possibility to be there for all, that access is there for all, and that it provides an incredibly enabler for uh, 
helping to, to implement human rights standards and ideas and to give people more possibilities to live their lives in dignity. I mean, that is from this background. At the same time, to see in which way they, this helps their own development. I mean, we are talking constantly about the right to development, and this can also help to further the discussion, to make better known to everybody. So for us, I mean, we are, this all happens, this whole technology, in the age of globalization, because globalization, many understood only this is globalization of capital, but I mean, it's globalization of knowledge also, it's globalization of all this. So that it would help to globalize the world in a human, dignitar dignified world, that is what we want to see happen. Well, that it will be taken, uh, that the internet will be taken by those who have the, uh, either the possibilities and resources and whatever decision making uh, at the table could use it and it can be snatched. It cannot be so easily controlled that it can be really uh, taken away uh, for all other, I would say, uncivil purposes. And uh, at the same time when this happens, that then, then restrictions come and uh, uh, that it would be a, a cut to a way that it would completely be a, a strange thing what we want the internet to be. So, I mean, whatever filtering, whatever uh, things uh, need to be done in order to protect, say, particularly vulnerable groups or children, that needs also to be discussed. It should not just be somebody decides and does it. I mean, in that way that the government says, okay, this has to be done, this should be really discussed in a uh, multi-stakeholder way. I think then we have uh, a better understanding where is exactly this balance, where is the balance what we need to do. So I think there is still an enormous challenge also to, to have those who have really enormous knowledge about this, how this can be achieved. Because when we go out to the universities and say, okay, listen, you know, you have to do this, or the, yeah, have you burnt your fingers yet? But you, you don't know. I mean, there is a lot of not knowledge yet in order to do this. I mean, to really provide this kind of balance that most and this optimum freedom can be uh, safeguarded at the same time to build protection measures into it, which would be really to, um, to help to protect just those who need the protection. But this is an enormous challenge yet. One word. the option to be the harmonizer. So harmonizer? Mm -hmm. Great, thank you so much.